Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at abusing Nginx's feature where it creates temporary files for very large requests. Um, and we're going to look at abusing that when we have an LFI to include create a large request and then include it um, so that we can get execution. And uh, this was part of the Peekaboo box from Hack the Box. It's one of the longer and most insane boxes I've ever done. Um, so this is just one small part of it, but I will, in this video, kind of introduce you to the LFI that we have and show how we can use um, this script from a blog post that uh, walks through how to use it. We'll, we'll go through the script and then we'll figure out how to update it to work in our LFI and uh, we'll get execution at the end. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so there's a whole bunch of work in this box getting to the point where I'm gonna have this uh, local file include. Um, so we're, you're gonna have to do a little bit of just trust me. In fact, I'll run this command here so you can see it. Um, basically, we're doing a curl to this long URL uh, on this API that we had to discover, and we're specifically going to this admin content assets add, add and then some string um, with this session cookie specifically to get past a mod security rule. There's a whole bunch of why that's an interesting bypass. I'm going to put a link to my blog post that goes into all those details in the description here. But for now, we're just going to say we've got this uh, local file include. Um, we know it's a local file include because if I include a file that's not real, uh, put some stuff there. Uh, our debug code says uh, it shows it's trying to include regions slash dot dot slash blah, 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 blah. So we can see that that is a PHP file include we have here, or at least the error messages are telling us that. Um, and we want to make sure, find some way to leverage from that into remote code execution. And that's where I'm going to turn to this blog post right here. I'll put a link in the description. It's also in my blog post, um, which talks about a way to do that to abuse Nginx's file upload the way Nginx will cache a large request as a file while it needs it. Um, and this post goes through all the details of how that works, um, but there's an exploit script here, and that's what we're going to look at today. Um, I've got it over here in, in our VS Code. And so we're first going to go through it, and then we'll go back and modify it so that it works on uh, Pika2. So um, let's see, we can get out of here. Sweet. Okay. So we've got uh, it's a Python script. We're going to start by defining a URL. The first thing we're going to do is define find the nginx worker processes. That that applies to this whole section. Uh, we start by getting the number of processors that the pro computer is running, uh, and then we get the maximum number of PIDs that the computer is running. Um, then we're going to loop, loop over basically all of those PIDs, um, and for each time we're going to try to read from proc that PID command line. And we're looking to see if that is an Nginx worker process. And we want to get Nginx worker processes until we've got more, the like greater than or equal to the number of CPUs. So if there's two CPUs, we want two processes. If there's 10 CPUs, we want to have to find 10 of these processes. And the reason is because we're going to brute force these processes. And we don't want to be brute forcing more than there are CPUs to handle them. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so then, so at this point, we've got the PIDs of the, of the processes. Uh, we're going to start with this global variable done. And we're going to set it to false. We've got a function here, upload, and this is going to, starting uploader, it's going to basically, while not done, it's going to send a web shell followed by 16 megabytes worth of A's. Um, and so we're just going to make a really large uh, thing, and, and it does this kind of cleverly here. We can actually see this is the start of a comment, so it's actually within the PHP that this is here. So that means when we get a result back from this web shell, we're just going to get the result here. We're not going to have the A's. And that, that's kind of nice, actually. Um, then we're going to start 16 threads of those things just running uploader, constantly pushing these things to, to target. And the goal, again, is to get them to write files so that when they temporarily write a file, uh, we're going to have enough of these that we're just spraying the disk with these, and hopefully we can catch one of them while it exists in a very short window. Um, next, we have a function called brooder, which is also going to reference done. That's what the global here does. And uh, while not done, we are going to print that we're starting the loop for the PID. Um, we're then going to uh, start go for the file descriptors 4 through 32. And the reason, that, I think that's kind of arbitrary, but it basically is saying um, 0, 1, and 2, and 3 are all typically used by PHP. So the rest of these could be the file handle to this thing. So we're going to check each one of them. Um, there's a trick in here that I don't quite know what's about, but it's using this trick to bypass some problem. And that's why we go into the PID directory, back out, and then back in again, trying to hit the file descriptor. Um, it then uses this request, which is assumed to be like an LFI, to get to it. Uh, it looks, if, if there's a response text at all, 
then uh, it prints that text and it says it's done and it exits. And so then because it's done, these other loops can finish and exit as well. And then again, for each of the PIDs and Nginx workers, it's gonna start a thread where with that PID. So for each Nginx worker PID or each processor really on the target, we're gonna to try to start sending up looking for, can we brute force the file descriptors associated with that PID to find the temporary file while it exists? And if so, it gets included and it gets executed and we win. Um, so to update that to match this, there's a few things. We are gonna make post requests and not, not get requests. We are, have to have a cookie. Our URL has to be this thing. So we'll come up here, actually, we can grab this. And we can come up here to the top and just set our URL here. Um, I'm actually not gonna, we might run this several times and I'm just going to set these things manually. So let's uh, comment this out. We will do CPUs equals, and we can do this ourselves. So it's proc CPU info. Um, so let's, we can grab that. Proc CPU info. And it's looking for, let's see, grep processor. Sweet. So there's two processors. We can see that right here. So we can just, rather than having to run that request each time we run the script, we're just going to do it. Um, same thing here with PID mask. Uh, this would be proc sys kernel PID max. So we'll come here. Proc this kernel PID, is there a underscore max? Like that. And we get, I'm gonna go ahead and do a dash S here and we get nothing. Um, oh, cause we're grepping for processor. We don't want that, let's get rid of that. Uh, there's our PID max right there. So we can grab this and PID max equals that, and we can just comment that out. All right, now we've set those two. And now we'll loop over these things. Now this, this we have to use our LFI to read. So we're gonna do a post request. Um, make this, let's see, we're gonna make this data instead of params. Uh, the data is going to be a region, and it's going to be dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, like that. So that should be okay. Uh, we can probably, Put this up here, and we're also going to need this cookie. Pull you in, and we need headers equals cookies. Uh, maybe we just do cookies. Cookies equals dash a as a, and that should qualify us. Um, Let's see if that works. We should, that should be plenty. So we post there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if worker process in r.content, okay. Then we get that. Um, and we could probably run right until here and do sys.exit just to see. So we'll save that. We'll come over here and we'll do python rce.py. I've already broken something. Let's see. Rakshi uh 26. That's what I did. We run this, it's running in the back. Oh, something popped up. Okay, found it found found the workers 11 and 12. Sweet. Okay, so now we can come here and start our loop. Um, our uploader. I actually don't think it matters where our uploader goes. So we'll just go to URL, but it just what matters is we're putting all this data, and this data is so big that Nginx is gonna tempor temporarily write it to a file. So we don't have to mess with this at all. Um, this one we have to mess with a little bit more. So let's see, we're gonna put dot dot slash dot dot in front of here to get it back, get us back to the right path. Um, we're going to make this data is equal to, and it's not going to be file, it's going to be region. R-E-G-N-O-N, and that's going to be F. Um, for the sake of making things really simple for starting at least, I'm going to just do ID. So now we're just running ID here, so we don't even need this C. Um, and we need... Probably make this all one line, not that long. All right, that looks not bad. So there we go. We got. The, so we're going to do our request dot post to our URL with data of region putting us at this PID. We're going to check if there's anything in our dot text. Now I'm wondering because our error message when we get nothing is it going to come back? I think this is going to fail. So what we really want to do is put some kind of a trigger in here. Fxdf like that. Maybe we'll do like that. And then that's probably good enough. So we can say if r.txt and oxdf oxdf in r.txt, 
then we'll print this stuff. We could clean it up and like remove that marker, but we'll leave it for now. Um, and that might be all we need. Let's see. Um, come here, run this again. Let's see if we can get execution. Um, so we can see we've got, we found our two Nginx processes. So one for each uh, CPU. And then we've started our uploader running. 16 of them is just running constantly. And now we've got our brute loop started and we've seen it started a couple times. And I'm starting to wonder if we've failed here somewhere. Um, we better stop and take a look. I guess I could look up, we'll leave it running, but let's take a look. Um, so in our brute loop, we're doing request.post to region of F where F is this, that looks fine. Um, the, what could be going on here? Um, we've got, oh, we didn't set the cookie. We're missing the cookie, so we're not going to get it because of the cookie. So we can do, um, Cookies equals, and we'll just grab this from, where do we do it? Up here. Uh, without the cookie, that will be no good. So we've, now we've got the cookie. I bet that's going to work better. Let's try again. So again, we start off. We're going to have to find our Nginx processes. We now start our uploaders. We've now got our boot loop going. Um, and let's see, still not seeing it. Um, did I save this? Yeah, okay, I did. Um, all right, so I, I went and looked at this for a while, and the only thing I could think was that perhaps this needed to be a post request instead of a git request. Um, I know in the video, in the thing they use, it's a, in the blog post, it's a, it's a git request, um, which is weird. Um, but I thought, you know, it might make sense to actually put a larger post body than a post request. And uh, go ahead and give that a try. We run it now. Um, we will run it. It's going to, all the things, found the processes, started loop, and boom, we've got execution. So, um, yeah, I'm going to call it here. Um, this is a neat technique that you can use on Nginx. I do believe that the hack the box box has Nginx um, slightly tweaked to make this race condition a little easier to win. Um, so it's not going to, it might not be this quick in the wild if you're doing this on a real server, but um, in theory, you've got a while to let it run anyway. So it's kind of an interesting technique and worth a shot. Um, Thanks for hanging out with me today, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.